Bam! Live TV from the Catfish Conference. Dieter here. Hope everybody's doing good. Make sure I'm on the uh, right thing. I'm gonna check it out on my phone to make sure we're live. Uh, sorry I hadn't got on here today. It's been uh, kind of crazy uh, running around doing stuff. Yep, I'm live. I can see me. Uh, we had the catfish cook off today. Uh, was really good. I actually snuck some of the fish uh, before it was given to the judges. Um, there'll be some video of that later that I'm gonna cut and put together. It's pretty cool. Had a good time with it. Uh, a lot of good food, uh, and I forget the guys who won. Uh, I forgot who won. Anyway, uh, but I uh, got to talk to Luke over here. See that right there? That is the biggest YouTuber, that guy right there, in the catfish world, right there. It's not Catfish Dave, it is that guy right there, Luke Nichols from Catfish and Carp. Uh, I got to talk with him for a while. He was one of the judges um, in the catfish cook-off. And what else has been going on? We looked at boats, got a bunch of shots of boats, a bunch of shots of fishing rods, a whole bunch of stuff. It's been crazy, good seminars, and that's why I hadn't went live. So the legend is, and a bunch of people, and I'm gonna give you a second here. The, the legend in the world is that Catfish Dave was gonna be here. And sure enough, sure enough, he has been sighted and been found. Uh, his own property, I, I put the shout out to him yesterday. I told him the fishing's gonna suck, water's up, river's roaring, tornadoes are coming. And tornadoes are coming there. In all seriousness, it's gonna get some bad weather. But uh, so, without any further ado, the man, the myth, the legend. How the hell are you, man? What's going on, Dieter Melhorn? What do you think? You've never been to a catfish conference before. What do you think? It's big. It's big. Uh, the quality of the bathrooms yeah. isn't the best. Uh, the food is expensive. It's not ladies' bathrooms. The ladies need to have other bathroom options available. Yeah. 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 But there are lots of that options for anybody that likes to catfish. You know, the sport has exploded. Uh, and with the exploding sport, the demand for gear came. Hence, we have what we see here at the Catfish Conference. So, I'm actually getting a self-serving selfie with Dave here. We didn't get one last time uh, when I met him on the bank. Now, you're a bank fisher, and forgive Dave. Let me just tell you this. He learned an important lesson this year. Uh, he's got a lot of notoriety with his channel. If you're not following his channel, Catfish Dave on YouTube. I feel sure everybody watches it, but check him out. But a lot of people know him, wasn't expecting it, and a lot of people wanted to talk to him. They being the gracious person that he is, he talked back, believe it or not. And a uh, little horse. Yes. I think he'll be bringing him uh, a, a beverage with him next year to uh, keep the old pipes loose there. Uh, it's a great time when you got this many people in a place. They're gonna talk and everybody's gonna talk and you come out of here with sore feet and a sore throat. So next year you'll bring a drink with you to have something to drink. But you bank fish, you're exclusively a bank fisherman, probably the premier YouTuber for bank fishing for catfish. Did you see anything here that appeals to, maybe not you, but to bank fishermen out there? Because that's always the question, is there stuff for bank fishermen? Well, a lot of your rigging, of course, hooks, weights, sinkers, uh, different things is all the same, but I did see some longer option rods out there. Because uh, you like longer, like yeah. 10, 12 foot stuff to sling I, I'm, it. I'm using 12s. I'm fishing uh, bigger reservoirs. Sometimes I need an 80 yard cast to have any success. Not everybody needs that. Some guys fishing smaller rivers. But I did see several options of long rods uh, starting to be put out by some of these rod builders. You know, and that just helps the guy get a little more distance. And also a long rod can get your line up since you're off the bank over obstacles, rocks and stuff between you and the fish while you're bringing it in. Are any of the rods capable of the legendary six mile cast? I didn't actually try them out. That I would have to, I would have to actually yeah. get my hands yeah. on them. I think next year what we're actually talking about, there's a lot of talk about this if Dave comes back next year. Uh, this is a massive parking lot, and uh, it may be an attempt to, for Dave to, the river's around 4.2 miles from here, and we're thinking we can put a bait somewhere around one of those bridge pilings there on that train trussle going across the river. So just keep that in mind for next year. Uh, as far as bank fishing reels, 
is there stuff here because i don't bank fish so i don't really key in on stuff the reels rod holders that kind of stuff i know there's some specialty rod holders out there that a lot of you guys use some people have support sticks some of them have got some funky stuff i i put my rod on whatever's available a log somebody's fence if it's going into the water it don't matter to me but there are a lot of guys uh making bank rod holders you know i think what's that called jeremy rodder what, I don't know. what's jeremy wade oh Jer that jeremy wade he's, doesn't he have like a tv show no or no no i something. think this is a guy just making a oh this isn't this isn't a, this is the real thing yeah oh no, no, i'm being serious there's a, oh, there's a guy I thought we're talking about the marketing uh, rods where they weld them up nice and pretty to beat in the ground i use whatever because i use bait clickers most of the time now tell me a little bit about that because i'm a dragon baits uh anchored up circle hooks no clickers give me your thoughts and other people's thoughts that maybe be new and haven't seen your channel you talk about this stuff some why do you use clickers i can hear it i don't have to worry about a big fish hooking my pole on a rod holder and pulling the thing out of the grounds now just from experience if you're good with a clicker and you're good at setting a hook uh you know the way i do it is good because i'm i'm used to doing that but if you're not good at catfishing, probably the best thing to do is properly hook the bait with a circle hook and lock the rod down and let the fish do it. You will probably lit, lose less fish that way, but I don't like to beat stuff in the ground because I'm lazy, so I use the clicker. So. And that's your thing too, every time I see your rods are laid across a cooler or a tackle bag or something, yeah. so if you've got it obviously locked down, it's going for a, it's, it's it's going going for a for, ride down yeah. the river. Uh, what? Uh, I think most people will know, but some people in other parts of the country, what are fishing conditions like right now in the Tennessee River and eastern Tennessee where you're at? They're terrible. Same places in a lot of the country. Too much rain, up and down waters, you know, uh, uh, inconsistent weather, warm, cold, warm, cold. It's been a very inconsistent year this year. Shad kill on top of it makes it even rougher. Yeah. So. What's, uh, what's your catfish calendar looking like here? What, what are you looking forward to? We're starting to see more daylight. We're starting to see longer days. It's gonna, springs are coming. What are you looking forward to the next month? Uh, well, typically uh, when you have cold water, uh, especially muddy cold water, and you start getting the warmer days, these backwaters will start heating up. And during that first heat up stage, they can get really active with fish. So if you get some warmer days in February, like we're supposed to get with some sun, hit the muddy backwaters, man. The muddiest ones you can find that's got shad in them. Yeah. And a lot of times you'll find some big blues hanging in there. They might only come in for two or three days and leave, but you should check them out. A lot of times you can see the big swells in the water, you know, yeah. when they're in there. but. Has the, I know where I'm at, I'm told everybody that with our rise and drop and rise and drop, muddy, cold, all the rain, it screwed up what I call traditional winter patterns, possibilities, where we had a couple weeks ago, y'all had it too, a nice warm snap. Yes. Normally you could go shallow in that time and usually catch some nice fish as stuff starts moving. Has it screwed up pretty much your winter pattern? It's super? screwed up the winter pattern definitely for sure. So yeah. It's been an up and down year, try and er trial and error, and that's just fishing. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if I get a cold winter and it stays cold, those are my best winters. Cool. Now that's something I've never seen on any of your videos is your beginning. How did you get into chasing catfish period and trophy catfish, which is really what you pursue now? I always loved to fish. Uh, I was born in California. I was raised. Seriously? In, yeah. I didn't know that. I was raised in my young years in Florida. And of course, we had options to saltwater. Mm -hmm. We had catfish, but big catfish were not in abundance in Florida at that time. What part of Florida? North Florida, Lake, oh, okay. Lake okay. City. So if you wanted to hook something big, you went to the salt. Uh, basically, when I moved to Tennessee, the closest thing we had to sharks was catfish. So. Which is funny because part of the reason I got interested in fishing for them too because I always like to chase sharks and stuff. And how long have you been really hardcore big fish fishing? 20 years. Okay, so you've been at it. So you've seen the rise of the fishery, the decline of the oh, fishery, yeah. and where it's at oh, now. Yeah. What's your assessment of where it's at, where it's been, where it's going? 
conservation, all that kind of stuff. You've got uh, a good feel on that probably. The fisheries have declined from 10 years ago in my area due to uh, the explosion in the sport, number one, more people doing it, more pressure on the river. Also, commercial fishermen taking these fish for other purposes such as trophy pay lakes and stuff like that. So it has seen a decline. So what we have to do now as individuals is realize we have more people doing this in the same amount of rivers of fish and adjust our ethics and what we do with these fish. You know, maybe release the trophy fish and put smaller fish back or keep the smaller ones, release the trophies for breeding purposes. Yeah. Basically ethical fishing. We have to be smarter now because there's a lot more of us than ever was before. What are, what are your parameters? I know it differs for different people, different fisheries, depending on what your fish are. With where you're at, fishing Loudon, Watts Bar, those areas there, what's kind of what's your suggestion for people keeping? If you want to eat them, release them. Where's your where's your trophy line? Where's your I want to release it line at? Uh, basically, fish start start getting to be a rare catch around the 30 pound mark. So, you know, for a blue, an eight to 15 pound fish is an average everyday fish. Mm -hmm. if you get an eight to 15 pounder, you want something to eat. Keep you a couple of, no big deal. But your bigger fish are your breeders, and they are your, also, not all catfish get the same size. They're like people. Some people get really big and seven foot tall. Some people are five foot tall and 120 pounds. Catfish are the same way. So if you want big fish in the water, you need to keep the biggest fish for their genetics to be able to breed and put big fish genetics back in the water. Let me say this, normally, I sit here and have to jack my jaws. It is, it's very nice to have Dave come in here and do it, and it's very cruel of me to make him do it with the hoarse voice that he has, but we love Dave, and we wanted to have you here to talk to him. Let's talk about your channel. I want to make you talk some more. Uh, your channel, I think, is in about was about the same timeline as mine. You we're kind of doing some stuff kind of the same with subscribers' views. And then around, what was it, early February, January of this year, Yours got on, sort of going up the roller coaster and has still climbing to altitude. We haven't even got the gear up yet. It's still going. What's up with your channel? Can you attribute it to anything? Uh, and what's your future? Give me the rundown on the Catfish Dave channel on YouTube. Uh, well, I mean, I just beat me out there. Uh, Anything that happens, I show it. I show the good days, I show the bad days. If I get mad on the water and want to kick a rock or throw my pole on the ground, I'll do it. On the good days, I catch a 50 pounder, I'm a happy camper, you know. I just, I just show the realities of it. And I think people can relate to the toughness of catching trophy fish off the bank and what you have to go through and the time you have to put on the water to get that done. And it shows the ups and downs. I'm, I'm basically appealing to the real world blue collar fisherman that goes out there and throws a bait off the bank. Yeah, and I think that's, that's uh, yeah, I've been back and forth with you for a while and that was one thing I told you early on is that your channel hits a niche consistently of people that, you know, I think are underserved in the catfish world. There's not a lot of bank fishing stuff. There's plenty of bass fishing. Everybody and their brothers fishing for bass off the bank. But I think you've got a very, a very good, you know, group of people there, a following, and I think you give them very, very good information uh, that I don't hear anybody else giving out there, and I think people are keying in on that, and I think that's helping with it a lot. Well, I think a lot of people had in their minds uh, that the only way you're going to catch fish like that is out of a boat, and I'm showing that you can, in certain places, just walk straight up to a bank and do it. If you're at the right place at the right time of year with the right bait, these big fish can be caught without a big fancy boat. I mean, it's, uh, and a lot of people, I don't think it dawned on them that you can catch a hundred pound fish just going bank fishing. Yeah. But it happens, it gets done all the time. And I think I made that reality to a lot of people that it, mm -hmm. you do have a legitimate shot at a big fish well, let's talk about big fish for a second. I interviewed Chris Souders and some other people earlier, Larry Muse, and talked about world record fish. The current world records out of Kerr Lake, uh, Bugs Island, whatever you want to call it, North Carolina, Virginia line. There was another one caught out of there that was like 143 pounds. There's a replica back here over our shoulder at the uh, Big Cat Beaver booth. Where's the next world record coming from of Blue Cat? Well, 
that river system where the world records came out of, it has proven they have the fastest blue cat growth rate per year. Just the quality of food and conditions, and temperatures, depths of water, width of water. They grow blue cats faster. Uh, I think most of the country, if you get a 130 pound cat, that's, that's around your basic potential. Uh, and once you get into the James River system, that's when you start pushing 140, and that's been proven in recent years. Mm -hmm. There's been no proof whatsoever that anything bigger than 130 pounds can come out of anywhere else. But, you know, with Blue Cat, even if your lake isn't the best, you've, you've got at least a shot at a 100 pounder with good genetics, so. Yeah. Now, flathead catfish. I think the world record's what, 123-ish, somewhere around there. That hadn't been beat in years. We saw blue cats get beat every four or five years. Boom, 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 it climbed up. Uh, are we done with blue cat records? I heard from a couple, or with flathead records, I heard from a couple guys, they think that the increased blue cat population has an effect on those fish and how big they can get, and they're over hunted now. Are we gonna see that record ever broken? I believe it's possible. I believe I heard a story one time uh, where one was caught out of the Arkansas River maybe, maybe not by rod and reel means that weighed around 140 pounds. I think it is possible. I think the biggest giant flatheads are just a tough species because they're like a giant grouper. They just lay somewhere in the, a dark hole somewhere or somewhere where nobody can really get to them very easy. And they've only got eat limited because they don't even have to move. They wait for a 20 pound carp to swim in front of them and they gulp it <laughs> and they don't eat again for three weeks. Yeah. So if you pull up over that flathead, anytime in that three weeks he's not feeding, you're not gonna get him. Yeah. So I believe because they're a tougher fish to catch consistently, consistently, they also have a better chance maybe to survive fishing. You yeah. know, as far as your big giant flatheads, the smaller flatheads are obviously an easier fish to target. Yeah. We'll go switch gears 180 degrees in the other direction. There's a lot of people out here at watch that are new to fishing. You being a bank fisherman, what's your advice for people? You know, I can give them advice all day what to do in a boat. You know, if they start deep, go shallow, go shallow, go deep. What's your advice for somebody out there? I, you know, hey, I want to go catch one of these catfish like Catfish Dave is catching. I bought me a rod at Walmart. I got me some stuff. What's your advice on finding a place to fish and where to start, what to look for? Well, I mean, uh, you're going to have to find bank access. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's harder and harder. Right. We know, of course, you're going to have bank access around a boat ramp. Mm -hmm. Some boat ramps are good fishing locations. Uh, well, the thing about a blue cat is they're movers. So you may go to a, a boat ramp in the summer and not catch any blue cat there. But you may go to that same boat ramp in the winter and it be, might be full of them. So it's a matter of learning your waters. Uh, you know, I was telling uh, playing fish over there. Nah. Hand me that notepad down there. I mean, Sorry about that. blue cat are movers. Yeah. So there's gonna be some time of year where you go that they're gonna move through for whatever reason. I don't care if it's going from a summer location to a fall location. That river's a highway, and because they are movers, you've got a, always got a shot at a blue cat. Now, a flathead, they live where they live, you know. You usually got to go to a flathead's home or close to his home. But blue cat, since they're movers, a bad place at one time of year can be a great place at another. So no. you just keep fishing your waters and you learn by experience. When you have a good day, remember that in your head, what time of year it was that you caught that fish there and what you cut it on. Two last things. What's the coolest thing you've seen at the show? Or something different, or it was like, ah, that was pretty cool. Uh, well, I mean, I'm impressed by just the magnitude of what's here. You were thinking a lot smaller. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, there's a lot of options for cat fishermen out there. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's really exploded to where, you know, you can get what you ever, whatever you want, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. You know, the catfish market was very limited 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. But well, we're going to do the lightning round. They didn't know about this. This is 10 questions. It's one or the other. It's binary. One, boom. That's the lightning round. Are you ready? Here we go. Circle hook or J hook? Circle hook. 
Daytime or nighttime for catching catfish? Nighttime. Spinning reel or baitcaster? For me, for what I do, baitcaster. Braid or mono? Mono. Here's a tough one. Better catfish bait, soap or bubble gum? Soap. So, uh, which do you want to catch a monster, blue or flathead? Mm. Due to the rarity of a giant flathead, probably a flathead. Egg sinker or no roll sinker? No roll will do the same as an egg sinker, but you have the option of the no roll, so no roll. Live or cut bait? That depends on the species. Oh, see, we said Most one of the, or the air, other. Okay, cut bait. I can, I can do it all on cut bait. I can catch flatheads, I can catch blues, and yeah, cut there bait. Catfish fillet, fried or baked? Fried. Boom. And I know the answer, and everybody knows the answer to the next to the last one. Fish from the bank or fish from a boat? For me, I enjoy bank fishing. You go, and a lot of people do. And the last one, the toughest one of all, make a catfish noise. Are you kidding me? But I kid you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate you sitting down. I've been waiting for this all weekend. <laughs> We're going to get off of here. I'll have some more stuff up on later on tonight.